just when you think things can't get any weirder. Uh, Steven Anderson and his wife sleep in different bedrooms. Not just different beds, different bedrooms. Okay, um, we'll talk about the scripture here in just a minute, but I'll let him speak for himself. Decisions, And as long as we stay within the parameters of his word, as long as we follow his word. Follow his word. Let me just show you something here real quickly. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4, marriage is honorable in all and the bed, singular, undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. Kind of like Romero there. And uh, I think that there was some stuff going on with Anderson too. Um, I don't think it's with women. It's probably with men. We'll get into that here as we continue. But listen to this. He doesn't want us to be robots or automatons. He lets us make our own decisions. You know, one thing about my marriage that sometimes shocks or horrifies people is that my wife and I sleep in separate bedrooms. Woo! We sleep in separate beds, separate bedrooms. And you know what? That, some people are horrified by that. Uh, yeah, you think? Um, that's a problem. That's a very serious problem. All right? Uh, right there. The bed undefiled. Why on earth would you sleep in different beds, first of all? Unless, I mean, I understand some elderly people and things like that. Somebody's on oxygen or something. And, and you know, you put them in their bed and, and the, you know, they're husband or wife or whatever gets in another bed and things so they can sleep a little bit better and I can understand that if you're really old you know elderly couple or something but a younger couple there's some there's some issues there of not wanting to be near not wanting to touch and just very very strange very strange um, so you know not gonna play any more of the video but I mean this is this is Anderson's channel right there. This is his channel. This is not a cut up video or something. He admitted it right there. So uh, Yeah um, That's a that's a problem. Okay, uh, another verse of scripture here. I'll share quickly um, First Corinthians chapter 7 You know let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife hath not power of her own body, but the husband, and likewise also the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. Okay, um, there's, you know, marriage, intimacy and in marriage is more than just producing babies. Okay. You say, well, we've produced a lot of babies. Uh, yes, so do the Amish, so do Muslims, so do uh, Catholics, so do rabbits and skunks and, and you know, dogs. <laughs> okay, uh, it's, it's not just to produce babies and then you fulfill your sexual desires in some other way. But when you get a guy that's, that's saying, I don't want to be in the same bed as my wife, there's some serious problems there. Very serious problems there. And then pretend, oh, we're happily married. No, you're not. No, you're not. Uh, again, here's here's the issue. You say, why are you digging up all this, this personal stuff? Because this guy is going to implode one of these days. You can't keep speaking the kind of vile, blasphemous stuff that Steven Anderson does. You can't keep saying the, the horrible things that he does and get away with it. He is going to implode. right? And there's already some very, very deep problems there. I know a lot of people have said over the years, that they believe that the reason he's so hard on sodomy is because he struggles with it himself. And when it comes out, it's going to be used to really try to demonize the rest of us who believe in the King James Bible. Okay, and Anderson is not part of us. I want to be making official statements on that, uh, that, that we are not you know, born-again, Bible-believing Christians will not include Stephen Anderson as being part of us. We understand that he is a cult leader. He is not truly, genuinely saved. And again, it's because of the false gospel that he preaches. He teaches that Jesus burned in hell to pay for sins. I mean, he teaches some very wicked, vile things. Yes, we can judge that as Christians. We can say that's a false brother over there, right? Paul talked about being in perils among false brethren. Um, so yeah, we can judge that. Don't give me this thing. Well, we shouldn't be judging people's salvation. Uh, you better judge people's salvation when it comes to this. I mean, there's there are some people that you kind of look and you say, well, it sounds right or whatever else. I don't know. It's up, you know, 
Lord will just have to show me more on that. I'll have to just spend some more time talking to them. Whatever. That's fine. Uh, if they believe the right doctrines and things that line up with scripture. Um, but there are people like Stephen Anderson that you can look at and you can clearly say, no way. He's not saved. Um, it, it's, it's terrible. But I, stuff needs to come out about this guy. And we need to distance ourselves as Bible-believing Christians from this guy and his movement. And so if not if, but when he does implode, when things come out about him and he does some foolish thing and whatever else, pulls a Jim Jones or something like that. Um, when he does something, we're not going to get lumped in with it. All right? That's why it's important for Christians to stand against Stephen Anderson and to come out and to say, this guy's dangerous, this guy's doing things that are really, really weird, that do not line up with Scripture. And his arrogance and whatever else of saying that he's a Bible-believing Christian. No, he's not. A Bible-believing Christian is not going to sleep in separate bedrooms. Right? It, def it defies scripture. So, very important to bring this stuff out. Let's let's take strong stands against Stephen Anderson.